this Sunday, like the last three Sundays, has been thrown for a loop at the last minute. Um, uh, Bonnie is not with us today because Rod was doing great until this morning. Uh, we don't think it's anything serious. They're checking him out, but he went from feeling good and supposed to being be released today to go home to um, uh, all of a sudden um, uh, he's not feeling well. So they're doing some checks to try to figure out to see if the infection came back or what happened. We don't know for sure. So if anybody gets a note uh, during service, uh, go ahead and uh, let me uh, know and we'll continue our prayers for Rod. Um, Carla's here, and I don't know if I told her, but she slid her just today. <laughs> so if she's not happy with me, it's not you. Um, so um, we have some announcements. Um, uh, they're in your bulletin. Many of them are the same as each week, so we'll let you um, read through those. Uh, but three important uh, notes today. Uh, immediately after service, those of you who are not staying will dismiss you after the service is normal, but we are having what's called a church conference today. Um, it is required annually uh, that we have a conference to elect officers, and there's other business that we need to uh, attend to. Um, so if you see a really strange guy kind of wandering around here, uh, this is Reverend Norm Coleman. Uh, he is a retired UMC clergy, a uh, good friend of ours, and uh, Norm uh, is worshiping with us today, and he will be presiding over our conference uh, as required uh, today. So if you could stay for that, it shouldn't take very long to go through the business, uh, but if there are questions or concerns, we will address those when we get to that. Also, um, due to other circumstances, we were planning on having... Uh, a potluck dinner the first Sunday in November. Uh, it has been moved to the first Sunday of December um, uh, because uh, there's been a rash of kidney stones. There's been a rash of uh, some other things going on uh, that just make it impossible to do the things that we normally do. So we have more time to plan for this. Um, and it's also Communion Sunday, so it'll be a wonderful uh, day of fellowship and a breaking of bread uh, literally uh, together. And a uh, big announcement, uh, the altar flowers are in celebration of Bob Vanderwall's 90th birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, his, his two daughters are here to celebrate with him today. And if you don't know Bob, take a few minutes and talk to him because this guy has led a very interesting life. Uh, he's a Marine veteran. Uh, he's been in the sailing and skiing and all kinds of unique and wonderful things, a business owner, um, just a, a, a tremendously uh, wonderful and interesting life. So if you don't know Bob, get to know Bob. He's a great guy So uh, on that. Do we have any other announcements for the good of the church? Yes, Kim. I just wanted to tag on to number four here with our sewing group on Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Um, I just wanted to let everybody know that we are focusing on our donations. Uh, we're working on chemo caps, neck pillows, and lap robes. Um, so we're focusing on our donations. And remember, anybody can show up. You need no skills. If you can use a pair of scissors, we will put you to work. All right. And also remember the craft ministry group um, is always looking uh, for fiddle-faddle kind of objects. I don't know how to explain it, but if you've got extra buttons, toggles, uh, key rings, like the those clip things, like on a, anything like uh, that. if you've got old key fobs that don't do anything, um, because they sew them and make fidget blankets. Uh, for people that instead of them scratching themselves and picking up their skin, it gives them something to do. And also, uh, our missions group, Sandy, has a bin out here. She's collecting long underwear, personal care items, and things like that. Uh, ch temperatures are changing, so we're going to be getting those items out to some of the homeless people in the area. 
Uh, so we've got a lot of good things that are going on uh, with our uh, missions and ministry groups. Uh, so if you'd like to uh, help with that or donate to that, please do so. If you find anything on sale as far as socks, uh, underwear, long underwear, warm stuff, um, uh, toothpaste, you know, some of you go to the dentist and you, you collect all those little fun size, you know, toothbrushes and toothpaste, bring those in. Those things are all uh, very valuable and usable. So uh, any other announcements? Uh, for today. All right, with that, uh, uh, let us stand. We're going to do our call to worship and opening prayer. Uh, just bear with us. The audio, uh, we have official United Methodist permitted audio recordings to replace Bonnie, and they do not replace Bonnie. But we can still praise and worship God with the best that we have. So let us give God our very best as Cardinal leads us in our call to worship. Please join me in the call to worship based on Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness and come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have brought us here today to worship and honor you. Lord, let today not be about us, let it not be about what we want or what we think we want to hear, but let us truly be open and let us give ourselves to you to this day. Let us worship you with our minds, our souls, and our strength. Uh, Lord, uh, um, uh, and, and let us be open to your Holy Spirit who is present here with us. Um, uh, Lord, uh, just let today be a day that um, we commune with you, that we feel your presence, that we hear your word, and that we leave here changed because of that. Lord, bless our fellowship with one another, and may you be honored in all that we do in this service. This we ask and pray through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now join us for a song of joy, hymn number 89, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. As I said, it is not perfect, but neither are we, but we can still be joyful in our celebration of God. So 
we are going to take this time to joyfully pass the peace of Christ. And just remember, if anybody wishes to keep uh, socially distant, just gladly hold your hands up and smile, and we will respect your distance. Otherwise, let us share the love and peace and joy of Jesus Christ today.
We'll gather now and share our time of joys and concerns. And my first joy is, is I got to yell at you to settle down. <laughs> this is great. It is great and wonderful uh, 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 to be here uh, and just have it is just each Sunday just seems to get stronger and stronger. And it is, is wonderful uh, to see that. So, um, uh, so uh, of course, we want to remember uh, Rod, continue to keep Rod uh, in your prayers uh, as he's dealing with the diverticulitis. Um, as far as we know, that's the only issue that it is. Um, uh, and we want to lift up uh, this week... Kay Argo, uh, she is supposed to have surgery tomorrow to remove a tumor that's supposed to correct some of the problems that she's been experiencing. Uh, so continue to keep her in prayers. And then prayers for Danny. Uh, instead of going to vote, uh, the mayor, former mayor, <laughs> he's going to vote on the way maybe. <laughs> but Danny, Danny has his procedure. Uh, and, uh, huh? Well, Wednesday, okay, I had it down for November 2nd. So, but anyways, Wednesday, uh, Danny is going in for his procedure uh, to uh, get his stones uh, broken up. Uh, so, um, uh, so, uh, so that'll be uh, a relief for Danny on that. Um, um, uh, uh, Kim has told us that Glenn and Ruth are kind of doing okay steady state is good uh so continue to pray for them uh how's laura doing So keep, keep praying for Laura, and uh, phone calls and cards are always uh, appreciated uh, on that. Uh, do we have other joys and concerns to share today? Suddenly you went from loud to quiet. Yes, Carla. Um, could you put a prayer, uh, on our oh, yeah. Um, a parent of one of the boys that just joined the baseball team I coach, um, uh, she's been dealing with some issues and they don't know what it is. It's something related to her back and central nervous system. They thought it maybe be, might be MS, but they don't know. They don't have anything, no clear diagnosis for that. So if you would just uh, keep uh, Miranda, uh, uh, we'll add her to this list, but if you would keep Miranda in your prayers, uh, that would be greatly uh, uh, appreciated. Uh, yes. Uh, prayer for my brother-in-law, Dave, had to have um, a stint put in his carotid artery to open that up. So Mindy's brother-in-law uh, had a stent put in. Uh, so prayers for her brother-in-law. Yes, Martha. So um, continue to pray for Martha's sister-in-law, who's she's doing a little bit better with her health issues. Uh, but we also had on there her significant other, um, Dave Carr. He passed away. Uh, so it's a tough time for Joanne. So just keep uh, Martha's sister-in-law, uh, Joanne, in your prayers. Yes. My Her name is Lynn. Ellen. Ellen. Yeah. Okay. So pray for Ellen and that she had a serious fall and pray that she recovers with no surgery. Um, as you know, the older you get, the falls become more traumatic and harder to recover from. Danny? So 
Janet Whitman, what was her last name? Gallet. Gallet? So Janet Whitman Gallant passed away, uh, so prayers for her family. Any others? All right, well, let us join together uh, in prayer. Uh, I will say a prayer, uh, and then we'll join together in the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, this is one of our most special moments where we pause from our activities and we call upon you directly. Lord, we are ever grateful that you are a God who hears. We are grateful that you are a God who listens. God, you know our hearts and you know our needs, yet we are called to bring them to you. Lord, we have given many names today that are in your need of a healing touch. Lord, we lift these names up to you today. But Lord, not only do we lift them up to you, but we ask that we uh, find your will in these moments, that you teach us and lead us in ways that we are part of their healing, that we are part of bringing them comfort and a part of bringing them peace. And Lord, as we uh, not only lift up our concerns to you today, we also celebrate many of our great joys. We thank you for celebrations of family and friends. We thank you for birthdays. Uh, we thank you for all the ways that you are at work in our lives and in this church. Lord, uh, your presence is truly felt here, and we are uh, uh, just uh, uh, elated to see what God is doing and changing in people's lives. And Lord, as we come together, and as a sign of your people, we pray together the prayer your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now for the word of God. This morning come from in the Old Testament two chapters or two chapters of Genesis 17 verses 15 through 19 and 18 verses 9 through 15 and then our New Testament reading is from John 20 verses 19 through 29 from Genesis 17 God also said to Abram Abram Abraham as for Sarai your wife you are no longer to call her Sarai her name will be Sarah I will bless her and will surely give you a son by her I will bless her so that she will be the mother of nations. Kings of people will come from her. Abraham fell face down. He laughed and said to himself, Will a son be born to a man a hundred years old? Will Sarah bear a child at the age of 90? And Abraham said to God, If only Ishmael might live under your blessing. Then God said, Yes, but your wife Sarah will bear you a son, and you will call him Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his descendants after him. Moving into Genesis 18. Where is your wife Sarah? They asked him. There in the tent, he said. Then one of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent, which was behind him. Abraham and Sarah were already very old, and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself as she thought, After I am worn out and my Lord is old, will I now have this pleasure? Then the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Will I really have a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year, and Sarah will have a son. Sarah was afraid, so she lied and said, I did not laugh, but he said, yes, you did laugh. Moving into John 20. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. 
Now, Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will the ushers please come forward for the offering? This is the Gloria Padre, right? No, this is the doxology. Doxology. Okay. Ninety-five. So, so we're we're not we're just winging this, huh? Okay, Rachel, you want to start me? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him. Lord, we are grateful that you do not measure us by how well we do everything, but you measure us by the intent of our hearts. And Lord, that was a beautiful sound. And Lord, we give to you these tithes and offerings. Lord, we give these to you because we love you. We give them to you because you have blessed us. And Lord, we ask your hand to be on these tithes and offerings that you will take these and you will guide us and lead us to use these in ways that further your kingdom. May you be truly honored and glorified by all that we do as your church. All of this we ask and pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, if you would remain standing, we're going to sing hymn number 454, Open My Eyes.
should feel blessed because of my five years plus at my previous appointment, we only had an accompanist for maybe the last year of that. So when you see Bonnie, give her lots of love. And I didn't think about it, but Norm plays the guitar, but it was too late to call you. His camera wouldn't do much music for us. The guitar's not in the car. Or at least that's his claim. <laughs> well, good morning again. As we continue this sermon series I've called Wrestling with God, we continue to look at people who in one way or another have wrestled with God. And so far, God is undefeated. He's 4-0. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's main event and <laughs> this is the fourth or fifth week, guys. <laughs> there we go. We got it. There we got it. You know, we often make fun of people that believe the unbelievable. Think about the number of people who claim to have seen aliens or experienced alien abductions. How many of us believe those stories? Some people seem to be very open to believe the unbelievable while others are highly skeptical. Some people are so skeptical that they refuse to believe the evidence in front of them, no matter how believable or unbelievable things may be. You know, magicians like Harry Houdini, David Copperfield, or now today's Chris Angel have made a fortune doing the unbelievable. And as a kid, I always loved watching magicians. I thought magic was real. And I no longer believe in that kind of magic because I know they are just tricks. But I'm still amazed at the brilliant illusions they do, aren't you? I mean, you know it's a trick, but still you're like, how'd they do it? Well, this week's challenger is a familiar character. Thomas will be forever known as the doubter. In our resurrection story, we had some people that ignored the evidence and doubted Jesus had risen. And nobody was a bigger skeptic than Thomas. To him, it was inconceivable. Which that comes from a quote of a movie I like, but we'll let that one go. One would think that after following Jesus for three years, Watching him perform numerous miracles, including walking on water, healing the sick, raising Lazarus from the dead, that the disciples, after the day of resurrection, would be shouting in the streets that the Messiah has now performed his greatest miracle by conquering death. Wouldn't that make sense? Whew, it happened just like he said. The tomb is empty. Woohoo! But instead of having a fervent belief at the sight of the empty tomb, fear and doubt overcame the disciples. Even after hearing the reports from the women that Jesus had been seen alive, after John and Peter see the tomb is empty, after reports from two men traveling to Emmaus, do the disciples go looking for him? I mean, all these people say, Jesus, Jesus is alive. I've seen him. Do they go run and say, all right, let's go look for him? No, they hid in a room and they decided to talk about it. This must have been the very first church committee. <laughs> we don't know what to do. Let's have a committee. From Luke 24, 36, it says, while they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? Why do doubts rise in your mind? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I. 
myself. Touch me and see me. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement. The disciples finally see Jesus for themselves, and they're so overcome with joy and amazement that some of them still can't believe this is real. I mean, is this a dream? Can this really be happening? And Jesus leaves them, and later the disciples are joined by Thomas, who missed the previous appearance. And we all know the story of doubting Thomas. Thomas told the others he wasn't going to take anybody's word for it. He had to see it for himself because this was just too unbelievable. As we go to John, verse 24, now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again. I guess there's never too many meetings. And Thomas was with them. And though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Now Jesus starts with the phrase, peace be with you. A calming phrase. A phrase of assurance. A phrase that says, relax, I got this. And after trying to put Thomas at ease, he says, Thomas, look, feel, touch. This is very real. But then he quickly said, stop doubting and believe. Stop doubting and believe. See, Thomas walked with him for years. Thomas heard firsthand from his closest friends that Jesus was alive, and yet he did not believe. We all know people like Thomas. And I could hear Thomas as the women came back from the tomb saying, Our Lord has risen! And Thomas going, Are you sure? That don't sound right to me. I need more proof. And Peter and John come back out of breath, proclaiming, guys, the tomb is empty. And Thomas retorts, it's early, guys. You must be mistaken. Are you sure you were at the right tomb? And then the travelers from Emmaus come running up and saying, we met Jesus. He walked with us, but we didn't know it was him until we broke the bread. And, and I can hear Thomas saying, Really? You walked with him all that way and had dinner with him and you didn't recognize him? I'm sorry, but that's unbelievable. And then 10 of the disciples tell Thomas that Jesus showed up and ate with them. And Thomas still says, I don't believe you. And I could hear one of the other disciples saying, at least in their mind, Man, how much more proof do you need? How much more proof do you need? And finally, Jesus appears right in front of him, and he says, stop doubting and believe. And finally, he does believe. I think Thomas, unfortunately, represents a lot of people who claim to be Christians. Thomas had a lot of knowledge of who Jesus was and what Jesus taught. Thomas had the testimony of many others that Jesus had risen, yet he did not believe. And many of us in this very room have a lot of knowledge of who Jesus was. 
I mean, we got a whole Bible full of testimony about who Jesus was. And even today, we have the testimony of people who have experienced Jesus. Yet I think there are many who claim to be Christians and don't really believe. I mean, a real, no doubt about it, kind of faith. Ask yourself, do you really believe? Thomas finally believed, and we read from the scriptures, Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. My Lord, my God. Can you say that? He is my Lord. He is my God. That's a lot different than saying you're a Christian. That's different than saying, I believe there is a God. My Lord, my God. And it's not that you just say it. Do you live like he is your Lord? Do you live like he is your God? Verse 29, then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. But blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. None of us have physically touched the holes in Jesus' hands like Thomas. But many of us have seen Jesus in other ways. We have seen the love of Christ in our fellow believers. We have seen people who truly serve to meet the needs of others. We have seen people who go out and boldly proclaim that Jesus is Lord. We have seen the power of prayer. And just a week ago, I went to a revival service in Westchester. And a friend of mine, and yours, Norm Fish, he was healed of severe knee pain that he had been battling for two years. Been to the doctors, been to rehab, done everything, and he was in constant pain. And in that revival, now when you think revival, you think of a big, fiery, red-faced preacher spitting out at you. Well, she's about 5'5", five, five, and quiet. But she brought the truth of what God is capable of doing if we believe. And my friend, Carrie, was convicted because when his knees hurt, he went to the doctor. When his knees hurt, he went to the therapist. When his knees hurt, he opened up that bottle in the, in the cabinet. But you know what he didn't do? He never went to God. And he surrendered his problem to God. And at that moment, he went up to the altar and he gave it to God. He had his moment where he said, My Lord and my God, I give it to you. And that very moment, God took the pain away. And I had to show up and do a job at his house that Monday morning. And guess what? The pain was still gone. My Lord and my God. Is this a statement that defines your life? If I met some of your friends and I asked your friend, what is the most important part of their life? Would they say it was your faith or your job? Would they say it was your faith or sports? Would they say it is your faith or your house, your cars, your clothes or your money? What would people say about you? 
Because if we truly believe, people should see where our heart is. And when asked what is the most important part in your life, what best describes your life, would anyone describe you as a man or a woman of faith? Would anyone dare say about you that there's nothing more important to you than your faith? Would they say, you know what, there's nothing more important to that person than serving God through the church? Would anybody say you can't keep your nose out of the Bible? Would anyone say that your conversations always end up about Jesus? Or they know the name Jesus for a different reason from your conversation. You see, it's time for us to stop doubting. And it's time for us to start believing. I mean really believing. Really believing that God is God. That Jesus Christ is his son that Jesus Christ really died, he was really buried, and rose on the third day. And to believe that he ascended into heaven, and to believe that we can live by the power of the Holy Spirit. Are you a real believer? Because Jesus should be speaking to you right now. Stop doubting and believe. Because saying you believe does not make you a Christian. Living out your belief is what makes you a Christian. Being baptized, having an altar call, hitting an emotional high during a Christian retreat, reading your Bible, attending church, saying prayers, these are all beginnings and disciplines and these can and should always be a part of your experience as a Christian. But they become just moments or things unless you come away a believer. A believer who gets it. A believer who lives it. And trust me, we will all have moments of epic failure. But real faith, real faith, Real belief will keep us coming back to Christ. It will keep us coming back to the foot of Christ. It will bring us back to righteous and holy living. Are you willing to do this today? Are you ready to meet Jesus and say, My Lord, and my God? Are you ready to stop doubting and believe? Are you going to remain a skeptic like Thomas? Are you going to be a skeptic like Sarah, who laughed? God's going to do what? <laughs> That's a good one, Pastor. Oh. Uh, you think God can really fill this church again? You really think there's a chance for a revival? <laughs> Some of you are like that, aren't you? Tell you what, I believe. I believe Jesus still loves. I believe Jesus still saves. I believe Jesus still heals and redeems people. I believe miracles are still possible because I serve a risen Savior and He's in the world today. And as the old hymn says, You ask me how, I know He lives because He lives within my heart. Do you believe? And are you willing to proclaim my Lord and my God? Let us pray. My Lord, my God. Your Holy Spirit is working on us today. Lord, remove fear, remove the doubt. 
Let us reclaim our identity. Lord, now together in silence we confess to you. We confess our doubts. We confess our disbelief. We confess for all the times we have not been living as your children. We confess of the things that we have done wrong. And we confess to you the things that we have left undone. For sometimes our silence can be just as worse as anything we could say. Lord, I pray for those who are struggling in their faith that you fill them, renew them, restore them, and redeem them. And Lord, for those who are unsure, give them the faith today to trust you with their heart. Allow them to surrender in full forgiveness to you so that your Holy Spirit may come upon them and they too may utter that phrase, my Lord, my God. Lord, continue to be with us as we march forward as your people with you leading us by your will as our God. This we pray in the name of your sweet Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let us stand and sing. And let us sing as people who believe that he lives. We'll sing hymn number 310, He Lives.
So in just a, a moment, we are going to our uh, uh, meeting of business after the conclusion. So those of you who are leaving, I will greet you in the back, and then we'll reconvene in just a few minutes uh, to start our order of business. But think about what's coming up. Advent. We love to celebrate that Jesus was born. But you know what we should be celebrating all year long? That Jesus lives. Jesus lives. It's time we live like he lives in our hearts. It's time we stop doubting and believing because I've been telling you now for what six seven weeks that this Holy Spirit is at work and the more people who begin to surrender to the work of the Holy Spirit we will see great and mighty things happen in this church and that my friends is a guarantee but it starts with you to stop doubting start believing and to start living. Let us now go out and proclaim to the world, my Lord and my God. Leave here now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of his precious Holy Spirit. Amen.